from the sidelines on 1580 KGAL. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Baha, Baha, please. Usually you're not there anyway, and I didn't think you would be there. I'd be able to explain. And we just heard uh, with Bill Diamond on the news, he used the phrase fire pits. This is exactly why a good morning, I am Radio Ray. I've had that whole thing through my whole life, the number of things with pits, armpits, cherry pits, strawberry pits, gravel pits, the whole thing. And then you hear the, uh, you know, fire pits. That's, that's exactly why I'm Radio Ray. Last week I said with the sequester thing, you know, I wanted the eight figures, didn't get it. I can understand that. That's a lot of money, but uh, had, I was just sick and tired of the seven-figure thing. I've been drawing for 14 years. Had a little difference. I sequestered. So I'm just doing uh, this program. You're extremely fortunate to be listening <laughs> this hour and to catch me here and some sports and stuff. But I said that the radio and mornings in the radio did mornings for so many years it sort of defines me it's who i am and that's why i was radio ray and last week i said i was not too sure whether i should be radio ray any longer or just ray pitts but uh i've thought of it i've had another week to think and then i heard the thing with bill diamond in the fire pits and that's exactly why i am radio ray that's wally orderman over there now baja are you ready again are you ready to play or where are you on the thing there we go From the sidelines on this Friday, may a smile crease your Friday morning countenance. This is strange, just doing the one day a week. Last night, it suddenly hit me that today is Friday, and I'm supposed to be here. One of these Fridays, I will not remember that it's Friday, and I'll be home. And at that point, I stopped the cheering in the audience. I st I'm still hurt by such things. You know, I still have feelings. Don't be cheering. It will probably happen. But a good Friday morning, too. I remembered what day it was and what I'm supposed to do on Friday. So I am Radio Ray. And over there, the man that everybody was waiting to see, Wally Orton. Good morning, Ray. Who has... Th those are not your initials. The O is uh, for Ordeman, but the S Studley? is not... Uh, Studley, ornament Studley. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I, I did wear my... Uh my my polo with the the Oregon State polo in uh -huh. honor of the the Beavers starting tomorrow. Are they doing something? Uh, they, uh, they are playing very significant games now. Are they? I, yeah. I don't pay any attention to anything anymore. Oh, but you do. Do I? You do. Uh, I died last yeah. weekend. Yeah. Wor World <laughs> Series starts tomorrow. Ga game one of the series is the Beavers and Mississippi State. In fact, why don't we? Uh, because it's going to be a little bit tough for me now to do uh, a whole hour. I mean, uh, I just, uh, you know, I'm not in training anymore. And suddenly jump in on Friday, I could strain some muscles like uh, lungs or whatever doing this hour. Why don't we just wrap it up by saying Matt Boyd, Andrew Moore, Ben Wetzler, Michael Conforto. In fact, let's go again. Michael Conforto. Uh, Matt Boyd, Andrew Moore, Ben Wetzler. That's it. This has been From the Sidelines, and we'll see you next Friday. <laughs> No, no, come back, Ray. Well, that's, that's about it. That, so much to talk about. That wraps up the week. Michael Conforto and that throw last Monday night. Yep, right on the money. In the eighth inning when he threw out the runner from uh, Kansas State. When they, hit, when they got the base hit on the runner in second, and if you're a Beaver fan, you know the deal. It was 4 nothing uh, Beavers at one point, then 4-1. They go into the eighth inning, two outs, a double. Suddenly it's 4-3, to three, a runner on second base. And then a base hit just in front of Conforto. And I was watching on TV. I was, too. Uh, yep. You couldn't get in that night? What happened? They <laughs> I actually had an opportunity to go, and it, and it uh, just, just couldn't play out. But. Well, when that ball, watching on TV, when the ball hit in front of his glove, and they had real close-up of it mm -hmm. out there already, thought, oh, no. And my word to Mary Jo was, game's tied. Yep. <laughs> and it was shocking when they switched the camera to home plate to see that the runner wasn't there yet. Right. I right. thought he probably already scored. Or they got him by a good six or eight feet. Yeah. And that it was, uh, you know, to, to take that on the short hop there at in out in the outfield. And Conforto was in a, he played that really, really well and and positioned himself well to come up throwing with that. And and for uh, Rodriguez to field it the way he did with a player bearing down on him coming coming from third. 
Oh, it, it was uh, I, that that play just I mean, it brought me out of my seat. I, I've told you before that I've been in situations where I'm watching sports on TV and suddenly I'm standing. And I don't remember how I got from point A to point B. <laughs> yeah. That was one of those times. Is that right? That's one of those times where they just nailed the guy at home plate. And you thought, okay, maybe we maybe we're going to have this. In fact, we should redo the opening. Michael Conforto, Jake Rodriguez, <laughs> Matt Boyd, Andrew Moore, and Ben Wetzel. You know, that's all. And they've got they've got so many role players on that on that team playing their roles to perfection too. There, it's it's quite a lineup start to finish. They've they've given us some some moments. You know, certainly where we we wondered if it was gonna if it was really meant to be, but they've come through. It, it's very exciting to watch. The throw by Conforto when the when they showed home plate, I thought the runner already would have scored. <laughs> I was surprised that he was so far down the mm -hmm. third baseline. Yeah. And then the throw comes, and you see Rodriguez take it perfectly, a few steps down the third baseline, so there's not a chance for him to you know slide under the tag or right. whatever. What he has to do now is to hang on to the ball. Yeah. Now, that and wasn't the third collision. out, was it? That was it. Was it the third out? It was okay, the last. So the, the runner got a late jump then because they, you know, they should have been taken off on the crack of the bat. True. With, uh, with two outs, he certainly should have been. But uh, on the other hand, he could be thrown out at, at third base if, That's he really, true. if he really gets a late jump. Maybe he's thrown out at, at third or if, if, it's, uh, if Conforto comes up with that ball quickly mm -hmm. and he gets trapped at third. I wasn't sure why he was not past home plate, right. but it was stunning suddenly because I thought the game was tied. And to suddenly realize that he wasn't home and here comes the throw and he's out was magnified that moment even more than just a, a play at the plate. Yeah. Because I thought, oh, they're tied, they're going to lose. They're yeah. not going to Omaha. Everything had fallen apart and suddenly it rises again and the world is wonderful. That's sports. That is sports. And that's our Friday program and we'll see you... <laughs> Next week, cause don't quit. It. Don't quit. Your stamina is not that low after be, after a week. But that's it. That you, was you've the got moment. it in you. How about Friday night? Now Friday night we were up in uh, Portland, so or Saturday. Saturday is when it started. Saturday we were up in Portland, and it was two to one in the ninth inning. I went out to the car at one point from where we were to tune in to see what was happening, and the game had just been tied. I mm -hmm. didn't hear that moment, and that was better for me. And I didn't either. And oh, you didn't? No, I didn't. I, I had to walk away from, from that game. I watched every pitch of the series except those last two innings, and, and just some circumstances took me away from the, from the broadcast. We're talking about but, the moment. It was 2-1 Beavers at that point. Right. And uh, two strikes on the batter. Mm -hmm. And then there's, what, a triple and a, and a single. Right. And they're tied at two. Yeah. I, didn't, I did not hear that part. I heard the subsequent moment when we went to the bullpen and brought in a, a new pitcher, I mm. presume, because suddenly I, uh, I forgot who was, uh, who was on the mound uh, at that point. It doesn't really matter. But I am glad that I didn't hear the moment because if I'd gotten in the car and heard that there were two strikes in the batter and the game was almost over... I would have died. <laughs> but you didn't, you didn't hear that either. I didn't either. Oh, that's no. good. I no. wonder what your reaction was to that. Uh, well, I, you know, certainly disappointment. You know, you thought they had it in the bag. And I, I, was, I had disappointment in myself that I had to walk away from it but, uh, and that I wasn't going to be able to listen to the, to the remainder. But uh, that's just how it was. I wonder, did, did Mike Parker jump out of the box? <laughs> he, gets, <laughs> he gets upset. He gets upset at, at you know, those things. Yeah. Yeah, but you know the, the the thing is, I I quickly rebounded from that. I uh, just the way the Beavs have been and the way they've come back from adversity, and the fact that Andrew Moore was on the mound the next day, I was not concerned about the next one. I really wasn't. But it but the the game three. Here we go. Let's the, do this. The game three. No, I I'm serious. Andrew Moore has come through, and and the, they have supported him with runs since we've been keeping track of this. I mean, it, all season, and and uh, the, you know the way he. Uh, the way he's been been pitching and the run support he's been getting, I was not concerned about game two. I, I knew the Beavs would win that. But the rubber match, I was, I was nervous. I was nervous. Yeah. And I was nervous till the end. Well, good for them. That was, that was a wonderful moment on Monday. So they're back in uh, Omaha. What now will please you? Is it enough that they got to Omaha where you'd be terribly distressed if they should lose? If they go two and out... I, I'll be disappointed, yeah. but but I would like to see them make a little bit of a run here. Uh, it, it, we know that they can. We know they've got the pitching to make that happen, 
and and they just they have to get the run support. They're going to be facing the best of the best now, and and I I think they've got it in them. I think with the number of national seeds that are out of the tournament now, what is it? Three national seeds are in the College World Series. It's crazy. An amazing number of upsets. Yeah, amazing. Last and UCLA taking care of Fullerton and, and Fullerton and two. UCLA is there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to. You see know, them out. Uh, uh, Vanderbilt's out. Uh, Virginia's out. Yeah. North you know, Carolina North, slipped in by a run. Yes. In the barely final made game. the super regional. They had what a fourteen inning game or something yeah. to to get past the regional. Yeah. And then had a, had a, a three game series in the super regional. I, they're vulnerable. Yeah, everybody is. Hey, that includes Oregon State. Before we go on, grandson Jackson's listening to the broadcast, listening to our show this morning. So I want to say choice. hi to Jackson. What a good and my, choice. And my, wife, and my wife, Renee, she's okay. listening to. They're together right now. So. All right. I don't know if, uh, if Mary Jo is home and listening. Um, I don't think so, actually. But Enzo may have the radio on. And he's ah, sleeping. Enzo. <laughs> Enzo. <laughs> <laughs> Enzo, yeah, one of the good things with the sequester is I can get up with him. He gets up at dawn. When the, when the light strikes. The last couple of days, it's been a little cloudy, so he's been up a little bit later. But it, uh, when it's bright, sunshiny day, he'll be up about 5. Mm. And he'll start whining. And I get up with him, and I go and walk. and That's a real change in my life. You and I do the same thing. You know what? It's light like? hits us. Yeah. We wake up, start whining. Oh, that's Enzo. I don't. I don't. I want to sleep. You don't? No. In fact, uh, I'm sick and tired of the dog now after two weeks in sequester. <laughs> <laughs> Enzo, are you listening? <laughs> Could you sleep in a little bit? I'm supposed to be sleeping in the morning now. I'm up at 5 with the dog, walking. This can get tiring pretty quickly. Nah, he's a wonderful dog. Would you like him for a while? How do we go from <laughs> talking about my grandson to your dog? Well, because uh, you said who's home and listening. Enzo may be home and listening. He listens. Fair enough. Because he knows he's always worried about me suddenly coming in and maybe he's raiding the cupboard or something, you know, or trying to get in the garbage. <laughs> but if he knows, he turns on the radio, if he knows I'm at work, he knows the distance. Because he came with me two weeks ago, uh, remember? Yeah. He was here in the studio. Yeah, he wonderful was. Wonderful animal. He was. Really. Wonderful. I tried to give him to you at that point. You wouldn't take him. <laughs> <laughs> we will take this break today. Oh, by the way, we were going to talk to Cliff Kirkpatrick. Going back to last week, a wonderful program. <laughs> <laughs> difficult from the sidelines in which I was going to speak with Cliff Kirkpatrick who has written a book on Oregon State baseball, The Legacy of Oregon State. And it has some interesting things of Brown and Pat Casey, uh, the, way they, the way they train, their philosophy for recruiting, and the stories about the, uh, you know, the two World Series victories. And I had it all set up to talk with Cliff last week, but I couldn't find his phone number here. Mm -hmm. And I thought Shocks I... Shocks me. Doesn't it? <laughs> Isn't this difficult? <laughs> I couldn't believe it myself. I'd done everything. You know, I'd, I'd written it down. I brought it on top of the stuff that I brought into the studio. But it wasn't here. So I thought the reason was probably the night before. I always lay out my clothes. Mm -hmm. The night before, I had put it in my pants pocket so that I wouldn't forget it. But I wore shorts that day. Uh -huh. So I was convinced that, oh, it's in the pants pocket and it's home on the bathroom counter. Well, it turns out that what happened was when I got out of the car, it was on the top of the material I brought here. Mm -hmm. I, it slipped off and fell onto the seat of the car. That's, uh. that's where it was the whole time. It was out in the car. But I couldn't get a hold of Cliff Kirkpatrick, and we tried everything. We called the Gazette Times. You get a message, and it says, uh, Welcome to the uh, information line for the Gazette Times, the Democrat Herald, and the Lebanon Express. If you want the Gazette Times, press 1. If you want the Democrat Herald, press two. And then, you know, you go, okay, one. Then it's, all right, would you like sports or news? And then press one, press two, press three. And then you get a recorded message again. Nobody answers the phone. How would you get a hold of him if you had a breaking news story? Well, we'll be in at five o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> I, I really don't understand this contemporary business of, you know, answering machines. And we, and Dave Adams was here trying to assist me to get a hold of them, I think, is at times. And finally, somehow, he got a number, and it turned out to be, uh, I think it was Jesse Sowa's number from uh, the Democrat yeah. Herald. Mm -hmm. It wasn't Cliff Kirkpatrick's number, so we spent <laughs> 15 minutes last week trying to get a hold of Cliff and never did. And afterward, I had to call him up and apologize when I found a number in my car, on the seat of the car. And I said, how would you like to do it next week? And he said, fine. Yesterday, I called him as a reminder, and he said, Oh, yeah, I got another event planned for tomorrow. I can't do it. Oh. Well, 
I am stunned that anybody had a chance to be on would plan another event. So now we're even up. We're one for one. Uh -huh. I missed his number last week. Yesterday he copped out. Now I'm wondering, what do we do next Friday? Rubber match next Friday. I maybe not because which is which is worse? My intending to call him, honestly intending, but making one little mistake. The paper slips off the top of the material I picked up from the car last week, or knowing that we're gonna he's gonna be on the air here, but then on top of it, planning another event that made it impossible. Which one is worse? Yours. Oh, nonsense. Yeah, absolutely. You're in charge. Nonsense. You're in charge. I'll tell you. Let me remind the audience at this point that Wally is going to be a groomsman at my son's wedding in uh, July. And he'll be part of the rehearsal. Did I know it was like two, some two or 3,000 people that we've never met in our lives. So the question is, what are we going to do for these people? You just lost. You weren't going to get a drink anyway. <laughs> You just lost dinner. <laughs> oh, man. No dinner. Uh, I, can, I can grab a Big Mac anywhere. One more <laughs> remark like the last one, and you're not going to be at the rehearsal dinner. <laughs> Pretty sure I am. Which is worse? <laughs> you better. Yeah. What, what's, My, more, what's more expensive, buying me a dinner or buying a bouncer to keep me out? Oh, please. I've been swimming a half mile every day. I'm like a rock. <laughs> I'm sinking. <laughs> My life is sinking before me. Which is worse, the fact I had every intent, every good intention to call Cliff. And he knew that he was going to be on today, but he gets another event. Whoa! And he takes that event over us. Mm. Not just me, but more me, but over you also. <laughs> more you. <laughs> Which is worse? You know, i got to stick with my original. Uh, you, ha yeah. you had the number, you yeah. lost it. Fine. You had the number, you lost it. Yeah, yeah. How do you spell your last name? Yeah, I'm not saying. O R D U D U M A N N. No dinner, no drink, no nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you just fixed your rehearsal. To that means I have to agree with you on everything. You're darn to right. To be able to get a dinner and, and drink at the rehearsal dinner. That's it. Okay. That's correct. All right. That is a correct now, assessment. Now, you see, you're in charge. Right. You can set the ground rules. So you, you bet. All yes, right. I am a charge. So not going to be very <laughs> compelling radio if I agree with you on everything. But I'll uh, tell you. Okay. You would have loved the French fries that we we're going to serve. <laughs> French fries and Kool-Aid. All right. Let's take a break. When we come back. Last week we had a, a Bill Stern piece you, that you missed in which he... Uh, you remember, you know, Bill Stern. I've heard you talk about Bill Stern. The, reporters from the, the reporter from the 1940s. Right. Dateline. 1943. Well, last week we had a piece in which he talked about a sportscaster named Graham McNamee, who apparently was a, a hero to Bill Stern. And he talked about Graham McNamee one day talking with a youngster in the broadcast studio, and the youngster came in and said that he was a big sports fan and wanted to go into sports broadcasting. And in this piece that Stern plays, he has somebody doing the voice of Graham McNamee saying, You know, young man, I think you have a wonderful singing voice. And it was, it was funny because the voice was very, <laughs> you know, it's not one you would suddenly say, go sing a song. And it turns out that the youngster with whom Graham McNamee was speaking and encouraged this youngster to become a singer was Frank Sinatra. Oh. According to the story. It was a fascinating Bill story. <laughs> story. What really was funny is this kid that they had portraying Sinatra. Was, you could picture him in later life. Dooby dooby doo. <laughs> <laughs> this awful. Well, I have another Bill Stern this morning. Okay. You know the Sports Illustrated jinx that they speak of? Yes, yeah, sure. If you're on the cover of Sports Illustrated, <laughs> your career is, is done. Right. It's in the tubes. It's in the basket. Well, he has one about Time Magazine in the 1940s. Time Magazine in the 1940s had something similar to today's Sports Illustrated jinx. It was the Time Magazine cover jinx in the 1940s. Okay. It's a fascinating piece that we will share with this audience in just a moment. I'm sure we will love it. If I didn't leave it out in the car... Can I have dinner now at the rehearsal? <laughs> Maybe Cliff Kirkpatrick has it. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. But that's part of the excitement of this program. Will it actually play when we come back? We never know. But we'll find out in just a moment on KGAL from the sidelines. Hello, this is Mark Tunstill, General Manager of Mallard Creek Golf Course in Lebanon. Have you always thought golf is too expensive or takes too much time from the family? At Mallard Creek, we promote families golfing together. All of our memberships include free golf for kids under 18, and memberships start as low as $99 per month. Visit us on Facebook or simply call Mallard Creek at 541-259-GOLF. 
That's 259-4653. At Mallard Creek, we honor the game's traditions and are leaving a legacy for our children's grandchildren. Memories are magic, so celebrate your fun times with a Happy Hours photo booth. A fun picture to last a lifetime. Look your Happy Hours photo booth today for birthdays, reunions, retirement parties, graduation, weddings, fundraisers, and more. Unlimited photos, professional intended, delivery, setup, takedown, and a large assortment of fun props. All you have to do is book your event. Call 541-409-5849 now or log on to happyhoursphotobooth.com and on Facebook. Memories are magic from Happy Hours photo booth. Hazelhurst, Mississippi, 1974. The three McGrath sisters have gathered to await news of their grandfather who was living out his last hours at the local hospital, along with their priggish cousin. Their troubles are both grave and hilarious, and in the end, the sisters seek to escape the past and seize the future. Albany Civic Theater presents Crimes of the Heart, playing June 21st through July 6th. Get your tickets now at Sid Stevens Jewelers in downtown Albany or Wine Styles in Corvallis. Crimes of the Heart, coming soon to the Albany Civic Theater. There are a lot of things we need to talk about in the mid Willamette Valley. Hi, I'm Dave Adams, KGAL Radio. We want to have those conversations on this radio station live. That's what we do every Monday through Friday from 11 to noon. Maybe it's taxes, roads, government, city council, school boards, whatever. I also want to know what you want to talk about. Email me, dave at kgal.com, and join the conversation. Valley Talk, 11 a.m., Monday through Friday, News Talk, 1580 KGAL. Stand by for a free offer. I want to tell you about the Fountain of Youth by Pure Attitude. It's a non-toxic, all-natural, power-packed, anti-aging, waterless formula serum with 100% active ingredients. It creates dramatic results, firmer skin, and less visible wrinkles. It's like Botox in a bottle. The Fountain of Youth was developed by award-winning chemist and health and beauty expert to the stars, David Pollack. When recently featured on the Today Show, all they could say was, I love it. This incredible product increases skin oxygenation, boosts collagen, increases hydration and cell renewal, and results in a tighter, firmer appearance to your face with less visible wrinkles. And now, we want to let you try it for free. Go to freefountainofyouth.com and you'll receive a free 14-day trial of the Fountain of Youth. Just pay a small shipping and handling fee. It makes a great gift because it's beautifully packaged and you'll love the new you. After using dermatologist approved and recommended, the Fountain of Youth. Go to freefountainofyouth.com. Radio for the Mid Valley's horse lovers, The Horse Show with Rick Lamb, Sunday mornings at 9 on Smart Talk 1580. Welcome back. You know, there's some fine stories that are told in between uh, the breaks on the program. I know on uh, some of the, the shows that are done on radio and then are rebroadcast on some of the lesser cable channels, that they will stay with those programs in between the break that you would have heard on radio. And there's some things. That was just a, a wonderful story about a wedding of 30, at least 37 years ago this summer that you missed. So we should do that part. Can we do that, Dave? Can we record the... In, sure. I don't think so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. Welcome back. We, we have had some great conversations off the air if, during breaks. Yes. Over the years. A marvelous thing. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Orton. Yeah. You're back to at least a French fry. Excellent. Excellent. You slipped me a little dessert. <laughs> There's no dessert. And that's the truth. No I dessert? Think, I think that that's truth. I don't believe there's a dessert. No, I'm not coming. <laughs> if I get the eight figures, you'll get the dessert. Okay. That's Wally Orderman. I'm Radio Ray. This is from the sidelines. Locally owned and operated KGAL Radio. And very pleased to be local. And that's something very rare in radio these days. Bill Stern, in the 1940s, was the top sports reporter. Had a very interesting show. We've shared some of the clips from the old Bill Stern show. There were two that I ran across several weeks ago. Last week, we shared the one in which Graham McNamee, a sports broadcaster, has a youngster come into his studio who confesses that he wants to be a sports broadcaster because Graham is his hero. And Graham says, you sound like you have a wonderful singing voice. And the punchline is, it turns out that that young man was Frank Sinatra. <laughs> we're supposed to believe that that's true. Well, this is Bill Stern from 1949. And he's talking about a jinx of that time. And before the break, 
We mentioned the uh, Sports Illustrated jinx that exists today. Now, I don't know that it's happened recently. It's been a while, wouldn't you say, that somebody has appeared on the cover of Sports <laughs> Illustrated? And, and then tanked. Really tanked yeah, or been I'm injured? Not sure. or, yeah, uh, not that I recall, but not, it still, still seems valid. Yeah, not in recent, recent time, most recent time, but it still is, stands out that there is this Sports Illustrated jinx. The Beavers on the cover of Sports Illustrated is number one of, if you're not that many years back, right. prior to the season. Right. And they had an awful <laughs> year. Everything fell apart. In the 1940s, that jinx was Time Magazine, to be on the cover of Time Magazine. Now, I didn't know that until I heard this piece from Bill Stern, and I hope you will find this interesting from 1949. Profile of a jinx. Do you realize that one of the strangest jinxes that sports has ever known has been the jinx connected with Time Magazine? No sooner do the pictures of sports celebrities appear on the cover of Time Magazine than these same sports celebrities seem to run into bad luck. This jinx has been going on for 18 years, where it began back on October 5th, 1931. And on the cover of Time magazine appears the picture of a famous racehorse named Cavalcade. Cavalcade has won every important race, including the Kentucky Derby. After Cavalcade's picture appears on the cover of Time magazine, the horse never wins another race. The jinx marches on. July 13th, 1936. On the cover of Time magazine appears the picture of Joe DiMaggio. That same week, in the All-Star game, Joe DiMaggio gets no hits in five times at bat, makes two errors, and loses the game for the American League. The jinx marches on. September 14th, 1936. On the cover of Time magazine appears the picture of the great tennis star, Helen Jacobs. That week, Helen Jacobs is the big favorite to win the tennis championship of America at Forest Hills. However, on the very next day, after her picture appears on the cover of Time magazine, Helen Jacobs loses her championship. The jinx marches on. September 13th, 1937. On the cover of Time magazine appears the picture of Baron Gottfried von Kram, Germany's tennis champion. The next day, he loses his championship and passes from world fame to the torture of a Nazi concentration camp. The jinx marches on. June 6, 1938. On the cover of Time magazine appears the picture of Johnny Goodman, America's amateur golf champion. That same week, Johnny loses both his matches, his championship, and the Walker Cup leaves America for the first time in 14 years. The jinx marches on. November 6, 1939. On the cover of Time magazine appears a picture of Tom Harmon and Michigan's unbeaten football team. The next week, Illinois, without a single victory to its credit, beats unbeaten Michigan for the greatest upset of the season. The jinx marches on. September 29th, 1941. On the cover of Time magazine appears a picture of Joe Lewis, the world's heavyweight champion. No sooner does Joe Lewis's picture appear on the cover of Time magazine when his wartime fight with Billy Kahn is called off. The jinx marches on. July 2nd, 1945. On the cover of Time magazine appears the picture of Mel Ott, the manager of the New York Giants. Immediately, Mel Ott watches his Giants drop from first to seventh place. The jinx marches on. April 14th, 1947. On the cover of Time magazine appears the picture of Leo DeRocher, manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers. That same week, Leo DeRocher is suspended from baseball for one year. The jinx marches on. January 10th, 1949. Now, now we're up to this year. Last month, on the cover of Time magazine, appears the picture of America's leading golfer, United States champion Ben Hogan. Last month, when Ben Hogan's picture did appear on the cover of Time magazine, we were broadcasting the Los Angeles Open Golf Tournament in California. Ben was in that tournament. It was then when Ben saw his own picture on the cover of Time magazine. This is what he actually said to me in a recorded radio interview. Sure, I know my picture is on the cover of Time magazine, but I don't believe that jinx story. My picture being on the cover of Time magazine will never jinx me. <laughs> Two weeks later, Ben Hogan is driving down a road in Texas when suddenly, suddenly a heavy bus, bus pulls out in front of him. Ben tries to swerve. He jams on the brakes, but it's too late. The heavy bus smashes into Ben Hogan's car. Ben Hogan lies now in a hospital. 
suffering from a brain concussion, a fractured pelvis, a broken collarbone, and three broken ribs. Time marches on. Time marches on. How about that? Uh, the one with, one with Joe Lewis, that the fight was canceled. I mean, that's not exactly a, a jinx. The wartime fight was canceled. I mean, he didn't lose his championship or anything. That's that's kind of a weak one. You know, that story, that that whole thing was fascinating. But I was just cracking up. That organ player has to be exhausted <laughs> at the end of one of those. <laughs> Lois Jones, you know that story. Yes, I do. <laughs> oh man, right. Your son Ryan texts me while this is going on. My he's son on, Ryan. He's yeah, a, Radio Ryan. He's, is he coming to the rehearsal dinner? <laughs> uh, he he will m- right. more than likely be so there. So far, he's been very nice to me. He gets dinner. He gets maybe a drink uh-huh. and maybe some French fries. He will he will slip me food if you don't. He he, Ryan yes. takes care of me. Yeah, it's uh, you know the boy makes mistakes sometimes, but that's the way I've been as a father. Your son's going to make some mistakes. <laughs> he will take care of me. How but about the? He he texted me a good point. He said yes. he said time and SI have nothing on the Madden jinx, the Madden curse. Oh yeah, we know. Madden. Yeah, John John Matt. Oh yeah, it's What's like, the What's I, the I won't go. I, the I won't Madden curse. I, yeah. What's the Madden curse? Uh, we'll talk about it in a little bit. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. By the way, right, ben I, Hogan. Be, mainly because I have no facts to back myself up here, but he's oh. right. What is it? To John, be, John Madden. To John be interviewed Madden talk, by John Madden. And yeah, things? or John Madden to talk about to talk about you to talk about you, and then uh-huh. epic failure. Failure. No, I don't know that one. <laughs> I'm not familiar with that. Does Bill Stern have one with uh, with a? <laughs> John Madden. Here's the, the Ben Hogan thing. You've got to be wondering. Ben Hogan with that crash. By the way, the crash sound. <laughs> I know that's a terrible thing with Hogan, but you had to laugh at just the sound of the crash. Uh, ben Hogan, in that accident, threw himself across his wife before the crash to uh, save her from injury. Isn't that some? And he was injured in the crash. He was seriously injured, as Bill Stern said. However, did he win again? Yes, he did. That was 1949. From 1950 on, he never played in more than seven events a year, but he was back within 16 months playing golf. He would play in pain. After that accident in 1949, he won 13 more times, including six majors. It's incredible. In 1953, he won the Masters, the U.S. Open, and the British Open. He was the only one to win three majors in a year before Tiger Woods performed the feat in the year 2000, winning three Masters that year and uh, he also 16 months after that crash he won the u.s open at marion at marion which is which is where it's being played as we speak where it is being played this week with all the rain falling down and people having tremendous problems to get out there at the right time on the course 16 months after the accident he won the u.s open at marion called the miracle at marion Maybe they'll refer to it sometime this weekend on the uh, golf broadcast if you watch. And you will know it from this program. This is better than that, as I always say, that NPR need payment regularly thing mm-hmm. down the dial where they ask you to send them money. I don't ask you to send me money for that kind of information. If you wanted to, you're welcome to do that. You're welcome to come by and drop it off here at 14th and Waverly if you like. And at that U.S. Open, he played in pain. 36 holes on the final day. I assume they must have had rain, and they played 36 holes of one day. Mm. And he did it 16 months after that accident. So he was all right. But an interesting piece there from Bill Stern. And I have clarification from Ryan here, too. And this is something I should have known. When you're on the cover of the Madden video game, you inevitably have a bad year. Oh. So you don't want to be on the cover of the video game. Uh Uh-huh. You who claim to know the reference know, to the Madden I, thing. I know. I, I, I thought I did. Yeah, I, you, that, you wanted to look better than hey, me. Hey, that's ethics and broadcasting right there. What is ethics? I, I, the fact that you got caught? No, that's the fact ethics. the fact that I hey I didn't have to say anything I could have buffaloed my way they through. They don't call that an ethics in court when Perry Mason finally gets the guy and the guy says <laughs> Yeah, you're right, Perry. I was guilty. I killed her. They don't let him off and say Okay, have, well that's fine. That's I didn't it. have to say anything. <laughs> that's very ethical I, of you. I wanted. I what? just wanted to make sure that the proper information was out there. Uh, yeah, right. You just lost the French fry that I had offered you a little while ago. You're and back and Ryan, Ryan will slip me fries. You're back to nothing. We will take this break. I think that was an interesting uh, piece, that uh, time jinx of 1949 from Bill Stern. 
That's just part of the things that we have this morning. You'll find out the rest when we continue from the sidelines at 1580 KGAL. The Osgood File, sponsored in part by Auto Owners Insurance, the no-problem people. Visit AutoOwners.com. This is Charles Osgood. You've heard of the music of the spheres, the sound some of the ancients believed the universe made as its parts moved. We found some people who used the sounds from a radio telescope as a basis for tunes made by humans. Get ready to dance to some heavenly music after this. Why turn to a trusted choice agency for your insurance needs? Because a trusted choice insurance agency is an independent advocate that works for your interest, not for any one company. That allows them to find the coverage, the company, and the price to fit your needs. They pledge to treat you as a person, not a policy. When you're looking for a trusted friend in the industry for home, auto, life, or business insurance, turn to Trusted Choice. Visit TrustedChoice.com today. What if someone invented a way to find the perfect brand new car that didn't involve driving from new car dealership to new car dealership? Well, Autotrader.com did. By searching our immense inventory of actual new cars for sale, you can see which dealers have the exact 2013 sedan you want. Plus, see who has the best price and compare offers in your area like cashback or low APR. So you can find which dealership has your perfect car and the best deal before ever leaving the house. Autotrader.com, the ultimate new car marketplace. Astrophysics graduate student Wanda Diaz-Merced has lost much of her eyesight to diabetes, but she's still able to take in the universe. She relies on her hearing to listen to the hisses and pops of signals collected by radio telescopes. She began hearing patterns, rhythms that could be put to music. Take, for example... That is data from space converted to synthesized musical sounds by a process called sonification, which makes it easier for us humans to distinguish sounds and pitch. Take that one step further by adding instrumentation. And you have music you could say was actually made in heaven. Diaz Merced has teamed up with another researcher who's a musician, Gerhard Sonnert, and they're now making beautiful space music together. There's no sound in the vacuum of space, of course, but there is a lot of information out there, and now some of it is being made into music we Earthlings can enjoy. The Osgood File, Charles Osgood, on the CBS Radio Network. brings his hot country sound live in concert to the Lake County Fairgrounds, Saturday, July 20th. Good morning, beautiful. Concert is free with your general admission ticket. Limited reserve seating is just $15. That was wonderful. I got a brand new girlfriend. Steve Holden. Go online to LynnCountyFair.com to purchase your tickets today. Grass is cut, the popcorn is popped, and the team is ready, and your seat is waiting. The Salem Kaiser Volcanoes are back. Join us for baseball's biggest promotion, opening night, Friday, June 14th, as we welcome the newest professional baseball team in Oregon, the Hillsboro Hops, to Volcano Stadium for their first ever game. See Volcanoes manager Gary Davenport debut and watch the night sky light up with a fantastic fireworks show. Opening weekend will conclude with a special Father's Day game. On Sunday the 16th, treat Dad to a day at the ballpark. It all starts with a full buffet Father's Day brunch at Volcano Stadium from 9 till noon, followed by the series finale with a hops at 5 o'clock that night. Call now for the hottest ticket in baseball, 503-390-2225, or visit us online at VolcanosBaseball.com. Volcanoes Baseball, erupting in 2013. <laughs> Beyond the Beltway with Bruce Dumont. Sunday afternoons on News Talk 1580 KGAL. Ah, that Baja van never sounded better. I think everybody is well rested now with the sequester thing. Welcome back. I'm Radio Ray. That's Wally Orton. We got everybody listening this morning. Grandson Jack, you think Enzo's listening? 
I think Renee, so. Renee's listening. Ryan and Jesse are in their car headed That's north. It. They're listening. That's a big audience for it's us. It's a huge audience. Frightens me. Well, it's a distinguished <laughs> audience. No, it's for us, it's big. <laughs> from, <laughs> from what I understand. <laughs> They used to make phone calls during the program and say, are you listening? But uh, they're still listening to what? From the sidelines. What, what is that? So they stopped making phone calls now. So if you're making phone calls back at the station, call Renee and Jackson and Ryan and, uh, and Enzo. Enzo will answer the phone. And Jesse. <laughs> Enzo will ask you for food to answer the question, but that will be fine. The sequester has been a strange thing for me, and I would, you know, that is the truth. Uh, the early mornings are very different, and that's good. I feel well-rested. But I'll tell you, it enables you, the extra time enables you to do some things that you have been denied a chance to do for many years. And one of those is starts several years ago, and it starts with Ryan, who may still be within earshot here and on his way up uh, I-5. And that is when we would be somewhere that had an outdoor pool, and Ryan would be in the pool the little kids would start playing a game called Marco Polo. Mm, most annoying game ever. Good for you. You're back to a couple of french fries and maybe even a full, we're going to serve like five or six. We're going to count them out on each plate. Now, you may get the full compliment. That is exactly it. It's one of the most annoying games ever created. Well, it has been my desire from the first time that I ever heard Ryan in the pool with kids yelling, Marco Polo, Marco Polo, Marco Polo to find out who was the first person that created that game. I believe it probably was a youngster. Now, I don't know. There's nothing really written about the game. You can't find anything on its origin. But I believe it probably was some youngster who came up with the idea, you know, youngsters will repeat. Somebody will say something and they'll repeat it. I think the most likely explanation is that it was the, the creation, the ungodly creation of young, some young creep that has never paid the price. Well, it has always been my intent to find out who created Marco Polo. I won't say what will happen. Then, but yeah, I'm wondering what the repercussions well, are. Well, here. you don't want to say some, you know, nasty things on the radio. But the person has to pay a price. There has to be some kind of price. There has to be prison time. There has to be. <laughs> There has to be something. What I would like to see. Thought you were going to withhold food at the rehearsal dinner or something. Well, he's certainly not coming to the rehearsal dinner. I can tell you that. I would like to see this person sequestered. That is, in a room somewhere, just where he cannot escape, bound, and uh, and gag, <laughs> and repeat over and over again on some recording, Marco Polo, Marco Polo, Marco Polo, Marco Polo, and watch this man go bonkers. Or woman. You know, if it's a woman, maybe we'll be a little less, won't gag her, all right? <laughs> well, that's, you know, you, I'm a gentleman, you know that. But that has been my goal through my life, and now I have a little extra time to research this thing. The problem is, I really don't know where to begin, and I've had uh, two weeks, and I'm not any further along than I was two weeks ago, and I would ask your help. I would ask for an assist from you. Does anyone know anything of the origin of this game? Who created it? Whose idea was it? Uh, I can't imagine that even the person that created it didn't suffer some. He must have created it for some kids, maybe his own kids or grandkids or whatever. Who knows how old the person is now? We don't know. Is he still alive, he or her? We don't mm, know. We don't. I would like to know. If they're dead, then we will give the name over the air here, and we will start denigrating the person. <laughs> all right. That, I'm out. That's, all right. That's, that's <laughs> what I am doing. And people say, you know, are you making good use of your time? So what is the answer? The answer is yes. I think I am making better time of my uh, sequester period than most people would. I want to find the man who created Marco Polo, something that many of you probably had the same response to that Wally did the moment I mentioned the game. Oh, my gosh, that just drives me nuts. I heard some people out at Fern Ridge Reservoir the other day doing the Marco Polo thing. I had just finished swimming and drying off. It, you know, it's going to take five minutes or something. I can't escape. Marco Polo, Marco Polo. <laughs> That's an awfully big venue to be playing Marco Polo. Well, they're that right, game go on forever. Well, they're right. To, they're right near me there, and they, they didn't. You know, I don't know what it is. I I don't even know how it's played to tell you the truth. They're right. There's about five or six kids in the water, and I realized again that that is a worthwhile goal, and it is something worthwhile of a sequester period. Something that 
what I would like to do is to do something with this extra time that I am now afforded that people will long remember and will be grateful that I had this extra time. And I think if I could find the creator of Marco Polo, subject this person to some, <laughs> some kind of punishment, people would be grateful. You have a worthy assistant. That's what I'm doing. Ryan is on the job. Good. Smartphone. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. In 1962, here's, a, here's a, a Bill Stern moment from me. In 1962, Alvin Dark was the manager of the San Francisco Giants. On his pitching staff was Gaylord Perry. Mm -hmm. Alvin, who uh, ironically about 10 years later or whatever in the 70s would become the manager of the Oakland A's right across the bridge. I think he managed them during one of their championship years. Uh, in 62, when he was manager of the Giants and had Gaylord Perry on his staff, he talked about Gaylord's inability to, to hit. In 1962, there, were, there was no designated uh, hitter uh, in either league, and the, the pitcher had to bat still in the American League. So there was a little more conversation about the abilities of your pitchers to hit because it was a key part of your lineup. Mm -hmm. If you instantly had an out at the number nine spot, that was not good. So there would be discussions about a staff that could not only pitch, but if a guy could pitch and be a 20-game winner and hit, that was good. But Alvin Dark said of Gaylord Perry, he won't hit a home run until man walks on the moon. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was 1962. Uh -huh. July the 20th. 1969. Da -da 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 -da. Can you play the organ? <laughs> <laughs> Where's Lois when you need her? Neil Armstrong walks on the moon. July the 20th, 1969. Gaylord Perry. No way. Gaylord Perry. No way. Hits a home run? Hits a home run. Are you serious? The same day that man walked on the moon. <laughs> One of those quirky sports moments. I, Seriously. Yeah, that's what I heard. I heard that on a, some uh, station <laughs> this week on a little Outs piece called uh, Mr. Knowledge or whatever it was. Gave, told that story. Apparently that's true. Wow. <laughs> July the 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong walked on the moon and Gaylord Perry hit a home run. <laughs> that's well, good stuff. But what I don't know, and I was trying to research that earlier before you uh, came in, is which happened first. Did Neil Armstrong, it was sometime in the afternoon, I was on the East Coast when they walked on the moon, and that would be, I, I would think, somewhere 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 1 o'clock Pacific Coast time. Mm. So I would think that it would, pre of course, Gaylord Perry could have been playing back East at that time. It was a Sunday, right? Wasn't it a Sunday afternoon? I'm not sure. I think so. Uh, I'm sure that it was. But the question is, did Neil Armstrong walk on the moon prior to Gaylord Perry hitting the home run? Given the time frame, I think that probably was the case. I think Gaylord probably homered after he walked on the moon. <laughs> Bill Stern, that's all for tonight. We'll take one more time out. We will return with more fascinating stuff from the sidelines at 1580 KGAL. It happens all the time. It's a beautiful summer day, that time of year when you spend a lot of time outside the house, when you and your guests notice that the house needs a fresh coat of paint. Don't wait until the outdoor season is well underway. Call Halcyon Painting now. The professionals at Halcyon Painting are in great demand from May through September, which is the prime outdoor painting season. And early booking will ensure that your paint shop will be scheduled this summer. Why not call right now for your non-obligation proposal? Halcyon Painting will give you a complete description of all work to be done in writing together with a firm price. Don't wait until you have to settle for just anyone to paint your home or business. Call Halcyon Painting at 752-7251. Mention this ad after accepting the bid and get $50 off the job. With Halcyon Painting, every job carries a written warranty. Beat the rush. Call now. 752-7251. Halcyon Painting. Hi folks, Jay Farner here, president of Quicken Loans. We're thrilled to have helped over 125,000 homeowners save money by refinancing with HARP. But there are millions more of you who could be saving big money on your home loans by getting HARPed. 
With HARP, you may be able to refinance with Quicken Loans even if your home has lost value. For example, if you owe $300,000 on your mortgage, but your home's only worth $150,000, Quicken Loans may still be able to help you get harp and start saving. Or if your current mortgage is higher than 3.99%, give us a call today at 800-QUICKEN. And for three years in a row now, J.D. Power & Associates has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction for primary mortgage origination. Once again, if your current mortgage is higher than 3.99%, or if you owe more than your home is worth, call Quicken Loans today at 800-QUICKEN, or go to quickenloans.com. For J.D. Power & Associates award information, visit jdpower.com. Important terms and conditions apply. Call us for cost information. Equal housing lender. Licensed in all 50 states. NMLS number 3030. B&R Auto Wrecking in Albany and Corvallis has foreign and domestic auto parts. Log on to AutoWrecking.com to find the location nearest you. You'll find over 10,000 motors and transmissions in stock ready to go now. B&R Auto Wrecking foreign and domestic auto parts with local national delivery. Serving the Northwest since 1960. Log on to AutoWrecking.com to find the location nearest you. If you own a car, think B&R. There's nothing better than local berries, especially if you don't have to do the picking. The Tequina Kiwanis Club of Albany is taking orders now for quick frozen blueberries, marion berries, and strawberries to be delivered to a convenient pickup point in Albany. Call now or link from kgal.com or kshow.net for more information. Stock up. You'll help fund many worthwhile Tequina Kiwanis projects and programs for kids. Don't miss out. Go to Newman 76 Station on Pacific in Albany or call now 928-6289. If it happens overnight, Eric and Gary have it live during Red Eye Radio on Smart Talk 1580 KGAL. Welcome back from the sidelines here at 1580 KGAL. Yes, we do this each Friday. Don't ask me why. and <laughs> That's just the case. You and your phone there. You know, phones uh, Phones are troubling. Uh, phones, uh, they're an interruption uh, all the time. The phone comes up with an answer. I had a goal that I thought perhaps would take me years in sequester to find out. And you go to the phone and you have the answer. Well, and my, my thanks to Ryan. But yes, and it, and it is, it, well, this explanation isn't spot on with what you were saying with, you know, how it ended up being a game in a pool. Mm -hmm. But it does make reference to uh, the explorer, Marco Polo, uh, exploring the region with China with his father and uncle, traveling to China, blah, blah, blah. During their, tr during their travels, fell asleep on his horse one day. His horse sensed this and dropped back from the traveling caravan within the nation. When Marco woke up, did not see his family, he began to hear voices within the desert, thought that it was his family searching for him and calling his name Marco. Because of this, he began to respond to those cries with Polo. It turned out that Marco Polo was actually hallucinating and they were not calling him even though he was later found by his family. <laughs> How that translates into the pool, the, the pool game, I'm not sure, but that uh -huh. is some historical reference to this. Okay. All right, so. well, I, th I think my goal has not been uh, lost yet because we still don't know how it That's was right. taken to a, a game in, in the pool. Who started that? That's Somebody right. that knew that story. Maybe it was yeah. Marco Polo's father. I tell you, Ryan was right on it, too. Sent me the link. What did he I was able to pull that up uh, on my phone and read that to you. That sickens me. What did he ask Siri? He used to ask me these questions. He went to ask.com. Dad, do you uh, know the answer? Now he doesn't ask me anymore. He goes to his phone. The phones have not only uh, become an annoyance in our society, they have interrupted the bonding between father and son in some cases. The, uh, and I know that at this moment, Ryan would say, Happy Father's Day to you. Yeah. Wish that to Siri while you're at it. <laughs> <laughs> the NBA playoffs. I hear the music already. What do you think? Sad, before it ever started, I thought because of the length of the series that Miami had played and the type of team play that San Antonio was playing, that they might win this series. And I would still say that. I do, too. I think San Antonio wins it in seven. So they win the next game at home? Yep. And then they're going to take one in Miami? Yep. The way it's been back and forth, you know, after the last night, you think, oh, Miami's coming back. But it keeps... Nope. Bouncing back and forth, they make nope. the adjustments. I, I think they shock us, and I think San Antonio wins it. And if they do, do the Heat? Do they make some trades in the off season, or let some people go, like Chris Bosh? Uh, what do they do? Not sure. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it for today. <laughs> Put that in your hats and smoke it. I'll have an opinion next week. I learned this on front of sidelines today. We don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> good deal. It's always fun to join you. Have a 
Mid Valley home of Smart Talk. This is News Talk 1580 KGAL, Lebanon, Albany, Corvallis.